Hey, John, thanks for coming. Yes, it's a pleasure. Glad to be here. Hey, this is going to be amazing. I mean, uh, this thing is not here yet. No, <laughs> so it's, it's only my second look. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely brand spanking new. All right, so here we go. We have a rental house. We go to rental houses. Mm -hmm. The C300, everywhere we go, the number one camera in a rental house. Right. I was at VER. They have like 50 or 60 of them. Over 100. Over 100. We okay. have nine out at some times. Yeah, we yeah, do. It's... For reality shows, it's the camera. Mm -hmm. Now, what, I'm shocked. I never envisioned that that would happen because, and I'm just going to say it straight out, it does not have the highest specs. Mm -hmm. It's never been about it. the specs to us. I mean, I always just go by the look. But it that's why the C300, the original one, is still kicking butt. You know, and I anticipate this will do the same, if not more. The reason why this camera goes out more than anything else is because it works. Mm -hmm. I had more positive feedback in terms of the reliability of this camera than any other comment. That was still number one. If, if there was any hesitation I had at all when we saw the, the Mark II, it was that we called it a Mark II. There is no camera that could be any more different from the C300 than this camera is. This is a 4K camera, not a 2K camera, not, a, not an HD camera. This is a camera that is boasting 15 stops of dynamic range. You guys have been doing this long enough to know that if anything, Canon is the most conservative company, never ever has overrated a number in their history. And when they say 15 stops of DR, that's an impressive figure. Mm -hmm. The footage that we've seen coming from the camera, just in the very early content that we've looked at, is extraordinary. It's blowing everybody's mind. It is the answer to every single thing that we sat down with the product group and said, can you, can you change this? Well, obviously, the, the big issue with the C300 was an 8-bit camera. And Canon's response was, well, it's the right 8 bits. Yeah, we get that. Unfortunately, there are protocols and there are standards that the broadcast industry sets that simply disallowed our camera from certain applications because of the color space. So now we've got uh, a camera that records at 4K at 10-bit. I can record 2K or HD at 10-bit or 12-bit. Um, the number one concern that I got in, in rental houses was the, the top handle was just right. not robust enough. So that's been completely redesigned. It's an entirely new handle system. Right. The second thing that people griped about was the fact that the cables into the monitor mm -hmm. were hardwired. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as that cable and failed. And not long enough. And not long enough. Yeah. As soon as that cable failed, yeah, you're you had, you're, you, everything was gone, and it was a four or $500 repair. So yeah. all the cables now are uh, Hiroshi cables. The uh, Hiroshi connectors on both ends are the same so that I can swap an audio and a video cable. On the C300 though, they were mixed. There was audio and video right. and different things were mixed in both, but right. now they're separated? Yes, same? they're separated, right. but using the same connector. Yeah. Right. You just gave and you have two different lengths. Idea. And, and two different lengths. Yeah. We have a, um, a 10 and a 50 centimeter. Right. Yeah, that was, a, that was a huge gripe. I mean, we have a rental house too. I can tell you all the gripes. The 8-bit sure. was a gripe. Mm -hmm. The non-diecast housing was a gripe mm -hmm. because we would, you know, things would break. You know, once something goes down in a camera, now you have this situation in a rental house where technically you're allowed to charge the customer till the camera comes back from repair, mm -hmm. but nobody does that because you've lost that customer. Sure. So now you, you have a piece of inventory that's useless for you. Right, right. So step one, I think you're gonna kill it in the rental area because you've built a production grade well, piece of equipment. When I go down my checklist of the things that my team came back to Canon Inc. with in terms of can you do this, can you do that, I checked every single box. They literally hmm. did everything that we wanted them to do, with the exception of one thing. We wanted more frame rate. So we can do 120 at 720p. We can do 60 uh, at, at HD and 2K, uh, but we're limited to 30 frames at 4K. And, and there's probably not a one of us that would like to have a little bit more. But we still have the ability to pull that raw signal out and go to recorder and record at a faster frame rate. Yeah, it, it, is, uh, we, it is an improvement. We told them that one of the things that for me is a pet peeve is having any on-screen display overlap the image. I hate yeah, that. Right. I, don't, I don't want any information in my oh, frame. Interesting you say that. Yeah. Your effective pixel array is an 8.84 megapixel. We've got a 9.85 megapixel area on the sensor. So there's enough room to put 
all of the information on the perimeter outside of the frame now. Mm -hmm. Um, the camera will have a, a retail price of $20,000, but uh, obviously retail is a sort of a fictitious amount. So the going rate on the camera will be exactly the same introduction price that the C300 was three and a half years ago, $16,999. When you're talking about professional 4K, mm -hmm. this is dirt cheap. If I compare this to all these other little low-cost 4K cameras, these are not production-grade cameras mm -hmm. that we can put in our rental department. And we don't, we have one of them in our rental department, and it goes out really to one customer. Mm -hmm. And we've paid for it, which is great. Mm -hmm. But we need this. We need, I don't want to say epic, but epic or Alexa quality case mm -hmm. and stability, like you said, that we know we can count on. Yeah. I mean, I noticed the die cast, you know, we're totally into die cast. Our radical right. here is die cast. Right. Uh, it's magnesium. I'm assuming this is magnesium, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's step one. The C300's biggest problem to me was that it was too plasticky. It, well, it, it wasn't production honestly, grade. Honestly, I thought it was a polycarbonate shell on the camera. I, I didn't realize that the camera was metal. It was pressed metal, but it was metal nonetheless. Yeah. And we, we told them, we said, you know, it just doesn't feel like we want it to feel. Uh, the weight, though, you might think that's a negative at first, but not to us, mm -hmm. especially the way we rig it up because we put the camera like actually on your shoulder. Yeah, it's sure. actually but, helpful. But a yeah. little weight is, is a little more inertia it's mass. and a more stability it's mass. to me. It's, it's easier to hold. It's so, the reason why I like a professional you know, DSLR. Again, the specs. At first, that might look like a negative, but it's not really. Well, we don't care. We slide it back. Actually, it's, it's a total positive for the recoil system yeah. because the balance point ends up, look at the balance point. This is mm -hmm. perfectly balanced. Mm -hmm. It ends up being where the camera's behind you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, this is great in your case because we can extend the hand grip forward and have total camera control. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like we were talking about the old beta cam days, if I had this giant recorder and a big Anton Bauer battery, I could slide everything forward. Sure. So, frankly, make this thing another pound or two heavier and we're happy. <laughs> yeah. Does it come with this? Yes. Okay, because the C500 didn't come with the grip, did it? No, because it was all um, fan and, and processor on the side. You were the sort of first people to come out with what we call a control grip. Mm -hmm. You know, you um, know, in order to do the recoil system, you need to relocate that mm -hmm. grip down sure. there and have this balanced sure. on your shoulder. Yeah. yeah, I mean, our system basically forces you to move your optics forward. Look, your camera's behind our whole optical mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. The hand grip's got to go forward, mm -hmm. and we have tried to create a beta cam. Mm -hmm. For people that have not used those things, well, those were the best design cameras ever. They are balanced on your shoulder, and they allowed you to shoot all day. This is now an all-day shooter. Mm -hmm. And if you're working on The Bachelor or a show like that, you're going to be working for 16 hours. You are not going to want that camera to be even a microscopic front heavy right? because right. you will be dying at the end of that day. Back yeah. trouble, arm trouble, everything. Yeah. So... This is a camera that uh, now has dual fans to keep it cool. Uh, the fan system is designed to disengage when I begin recording instead of the opposite. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, heat management is the number one challenge in any of these yeah. uh, UHD or 4K cameras. There's no question about it. Um, every C300 Mark II comes as an EF mount. That's how you buy the camera. Mm. If you want a PL mount on it, you send it into Canon Service, and Canon Service puts a PL mount on it. Mm, and Canon, Canon Service will put whatever mount on it you want, so we call it an interchangeable mount, but it's not a user interchangeable mount. But something that it borrowed from the C300, something that carried over from the C300 to the Mark II, is DAF is this dual pixel autofocusing technology. So for those who don't really understand what that is, how mm -hmm. does it work with this camera? What Canon has done on these sensors is something that they've put into the 7D DSLR, the uh, C100, the C300, now the Mark II. Every single photo site on the sensor is actually divided into two component cells. At the time of focus, those two cells act as a triangulation phase detection sensor. So every pixel at the moment of focus is using basically a, a phase detection uh, system of autofocus that is so accurate and so good that there are situations where I would say the autofocus would work better than any of us could follow a moving object. Well, what's it focusing on? I mean, how do you decide what it's picking? It. Do you choose well, in the, the in the in the original uh, C300 and in the C100, it was a small box that was centrally located. 
the rub being that your subject needed to be in that box. So you'd aim the box at the subject, lock the focus, and it would hold focus then. As the subject moved, then obviously you had to release it. Now that box is movable, and it's movable within an 80% area of the frame. So I can put that box wherever I want it. And the camera with either face detection or with subject detection will follow that subject. All you have to do is, is put this camera on a table and have somebody walk towards you and, and watch that focus work. And it's mind blowing. Despite the lenses? It's EF lenses. They have to be smart lenses. The servo lens, the 17-120, mm. will work with it. Okay. I've heard about this, but I've just been too afraid to try it. It's a one-man band, definitely worth a try. Yeah. The, uh, the camera has a dual turret ND filter configuration. I can go from two to 10 stop attenuation. Mm. Obviously, because the camera has a, an ISO range of, of 100 to 102,400, um, we've got this sensor that's wow. so extraordinarily sensitive uh, that we felt it would be important to have that dual turret technology. To that get is that another reason that when you're working on a lot of these reality shows, having that ability to have this just wacko ISO. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Uh, it's like night is, vision almost. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, right. That, that, you know that's like a number one reason. Sure. What are they rating this, the native ISO for? 800. Us? 800 still. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. We have the ability to adjust the sensitivity of that sensor without adding gain after the, the signal is processed. Right. So what I'm saying is, is that if I shoot something at 800 and I underexpose it two stops, effectively shooting at 3200, mm -hmm. it does not make as good an image as if I set the ISO at 3200. Well, oh, oh, okay, I see what I'm you're I'm actually saying. changing the sensitivity of that sensor. Um, we have the ability to do that um, because we're using dual Digic 5 processors now in this camera. So the ability for this camera to adjust its sensitivity makes that concept of a native ISO a little harder to kind of wrap your head yeah. around. Um, it's one of those numbers people kind of just want to hear. They want to hear. I mean? right. Yeah, but at least you're the first person we've interrogated from <laughs> all these companies that just gave me a number. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody mm -hmm. backs off that question. Mm -hmm. Okay, 800. It's mm -hmm. something we can start with, work with. Right. It's a good number. Right. And I, I, I believe it. I mean, I know mm -hmm. that, again, the sensitivity of the camera is what made the you, thing so usable. You know. I mean, yeah. we can set this thing at 6400 and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Which is unbelievable to us. I mean, we're, yeah. you know, we come Coming from the film, from the film world. <laughs> yeah. You've got the ability to run CFAST and SD. Uh, anything 4K or, of course, the, the 2K. 12-bit 444 RGB would have to go to the CFAST2 card, but um, if you're running a, a 422 um, HD, you can run that straight to the SD card. You've got the ability, we're using an entirely Canon-friendly wrapper on this effectively H.264 ABC technology, so we call it XF ABC. When we run the CFAST2 card for 4K, we're running that a bit rate at 410 megabits per second. There's no camera on the market that runs that high a bit rate internally. Take we can do simultaneous recording so that I can be running 4K on the CFAST2 card. I can be running a HD proxy on the SD oh, card. Oh, see, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, know, of course, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you can spit out different formats from mm -hmm. the different ports simultaneously, mm -hmm. correct? Well, you, absolutely. It, it's going to be HD out of the ports uh, with the exception of the 3G SDI, which is going to be your, your 4K raw. That's actually good. We've had issues where the ports can only all put out the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're working in 4K, you can only put out 4K, but no monitors or any of this yeah, stuff can look good. at that. Right. I mean, there probably are, but none that we have. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we can't even take it into our, our graticol, you know. Right. In order for us to take in 4K, we got to make this thing bigger. we got to bigger Expensive. processors. It adds huge costs. Yeah. The thing's going to be as much as your camera. But you don't need it. You don't yeah. need that resolution in there. No, I know, but it, <laughs> like you said, it got to the situation where when you initially had the prototype and you guys were doing your promo film, mm -hmm. it did I mean, not have that capability and right. they had to use a yeah. different EVF yeah. because it could only output 2K. Yeah, yeah. That was the problem, that, boom, yeah. solved. Mm -hmm. uh, now we haven't got into the whole LUT scenario, but mm -hmm. like if, if we want to bring your uh, C-Log mm -hmm. into, you're still calling it C-Log, right? We've got two now. Okay, mm -hmm. you bring it into here, we can go C-Log, LUT, C-Log, LUT, our LUT. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about your log. Well, I mean, to me, the big news, um, if you held a gun in my head and said in 10 words or less, what do I need to know about this camera? 
it's 15 stops of DR. By virtue of having this extraordinary HDR dynamic range, we are now using two different Canon logs. There's Canon log and Canon log 2. We now cover the REC 2020 color space. We're ACES compliant. That gives us such extraordinary, and I hate to use the term, future-proofing, hmm. in terms of No, that's of exactly having, what it is. ACES is it now, no and question. that is absolutely necessary that you put that in there. Had you not put that in there, you would have created a dog. It's a significant capability for the camera. I can set uh, the gamma at several different positions. I can match this camera to any of the DSLRs in the room. I can match the camera to an older C300. I can disable take all of the matrix down and off and I can match it to an F55 or I can match it to an Alexa with their system. Is it labeled yeah. that way inside? I mean, I, it's, say, matrix, it's matrix off is the menu selection. It's done in post, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's, that's the whole beauty of this yeah. ACES thing now. You can basically mix medias mm -hmm. and bring them all in in post right. and level them out. And when you go through DI, it's all... Right. I can set it know. to Rec. 709. I can set it to Rec. 2020. Um, I, I basically can set this camera up to be whatever I want it to be. If I shoot in Canalog 2, I'm giving it the benefit of all of the dynamic range that it's capable of, and obviously the grade on that is extraordinary. There's virtually no display, well, our display, our 2000 nit 4K display has the ability to actually show that 15 stops, but there's no technology that allows you to project it. Mm -hmm. So having 15 stops allows the color grader yeah, to yeah. get what they need. Yeah, no, but there's still no way you can sit in a theater and see mm -hmm. 15 stops of DR. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the viewfinder. What Big improvements on the finder. Uh, we've bumped up the resolution to 1.77 million pixels. So okay, it's, so okay. it's not good, bad. It's OLED, so it's a much yeah. brighter, probably not quite two times, maybe 1.8 times brighter than the, uh, than the older it, one. It's a reference screen. I mean, I don't want to be mean or anything, but this is a 5.4 million you know, right. pixel system. Right. That, this is a critical view screen. What we do with this all the time is we want to see that the camera's on. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure some mm -hmm. things like that. I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know. But if you're palming it, that's what you're If using. you're palming it, you have to use that. Sure. You know, that's all great, you know. So let's talk about some other things now. Mm -hmm. Other features that are new. Oh, let's talk about the battery power since I'm looking right at sure, it. Sure, yeah, I think that's an important thing to talk How about. How long? For the first time since the XL1, so the first time since 1997, Canon has a new battery technology. It's a 14.4 volt battery. That means that the battery that works on this camera will not work on any other Canon. Well, it's a real battery, it's so this is what we're accustomed it's to. It's probably a little more power hungry, though, too. Oh, right? there's no question yeah. about it. So yeah. this, is, this, is, this is a legit power system. We finally have upgraded the power system to match the quality of a, of a professional production-grade yeah. camera. And your battery's kind of small. How, what, what is the actual size of the battery? 3,200 milliamp and a 6,400 milliamp. Okay, and how many watt hours is that? I don't know. <laughs> okay, then we'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we'll leave it in, what the hell. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, yeah. in a studio configuration, these are running on AC. Or a block battery. Or a block is, battery, yeah. but obviously there's been more than one cable pulled out of a camera in the C300 history. Yeah. So, yeah, now we've got a Limo, um, okay. and it's a 14.4 volt uh, power supply. I'm just looking here. So, wait, how many, what do you got in video outs? So, we've got 3G SDI. Good. Um, you got an HDMI out? We have an HDMI out. See, which I is, love this already. Again, 1080. I still cannot understand. There are cameras out there that have one SDI out. What happens if that thing breaks? Yeah, yeah. You're done. You're or done if for you the need entire to feed day. Different things. I mean, but you always yeah. need to feed. Hell, our little yeah. radical has two yeah. outs. Yeah. You know, I mean, the point is, is that when you go on a real set, the makeup person wants one. Mm -hmm. The sound dude wants mm -hmm. one. I mean, obviously, you have a whole video distribution system, but I mean, this is also going to appeal to more of an indie guy, yep. and he's going to want to feed three or four other monitors, and this is great. Boom, you can do it. Yep. So now, uh, what about audio? Um, audio, you've got uh, two channel, 16 bit or 24 bit. Um, but you have a new option, don't you? Where you don't need the whole audio video module, you can just get uh, the, XLRs, right? The traditional, like the traditional rig as it comes out of the box is a, is a monitor, um, XLR. So there's a lot of people that don't want to use the AV unit, yeah. but they want to get audio into their camera. So we're making a little uh, adapter 
that's just XLR. Love in. it. Yeah. Now I got to stroke us for one second here because <laughs> it's your money. You know? Yeah, it's our money. But I, and I don't normally do this, but we hate hot shoes. Everybody in this industry hates hot shoes, and we've created this little thing here, which mm -hmm. is you spin that little. We call that the tie down. Mm -hmm. The thing that when it gets all the way up or all the way down, it's stuck and you literally need a channel lock to get it <laughs> off. Or it never gets tight. It, or it always twists. Yeah, and it's always twists. Right. Yeah. We've created this thing that we put out there, which is a set of uh -huh. jaws uh -huh. that actually brings the walls in. Mm -hmm. And I always do a demo. We don't have the AV unit here where I lock it in and then I lift the whole camera up with it and I twist it and it doesn't twist. Wow. Okay, now uh, let's go with the rest of these jacks here. I'm seeing this thing called a remote. What is that? Well, it, it's got a, a traditional link um, because obviously there's there's always going to be a need to have that um, capability. Plus, we've got um, our own wired remote, which is a, a more complex uh, signal yeah. command than than just the uh, the link. But that's for uses the cranes same jack. and things like that. Right. Yeah. You got a gen lock, that's great. Uh, I, I, I don't that's know how many around. people use it where you're having a multi-cam shoot with these cam We We could use that right now. Sure. <laughs> but sure. we're not. Right. Uh, I don't think a lot of people even get what that is. That's a that's an old day thing. One of the things that, that I want you guys to know is that these are all illuminated now. All of the uh, oh, wow. programmable mm -hmm. uh, buttons are illuminated. Um, there are 17 programmable buttons each one of which has the ability to program up to 50 different commands. You mean by multi-clicks or something? No, you go into the menu and say oh, button I number see. five yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, so you can map any of the features to those buttons? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we, we do the same basic features. thing with our graticle. We have eight program, how many do you have here? Uh, 17 buttons. Oh wow, we have eight programmable buttons on our graticle and every single feature can be programmed. You added this new helmet, which is kind of like our whole market thing. I like that you're using our term helmet. That's good. Thank you. Well, I, I just used it, you know, out of respect to you guys. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that. The only problem is they screwed it up. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, they didn't take it far enough. They didn't screw it up. They didn't take it far yes, enough. Yes, they screwed this thing up. The helmet. No, you're talking about the handle. Going well, that's out. the whole point of the helmet. Okay. So right. there, there's two there's two issues that people need to understand, and mm -hmm. this is what we build into the recoil. One is there's bottom balance and top balance. So the bottom balance is we have a lens and a camera here and we can slide that back and forth on our track here okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that gets the thing balanced on your shoulder but you, you can see we have a uh, rail up here mm -hmm. so now you can balance the handle mm -hmm. there's a thing called a low mode shot <laughs> you know where you sure. hold this and if the thing is tipped like this because of the weighting that does no good mm -hmm. so Thankfully, you guys screwed that up because you didn't put us out of business. And we're, yeah, we're doing everything we can to keep you guys going. Yeah, see, look at that. Perfectly balanced. Yeah. He just puts his finger in there. Yeah. You know, uh, your handle doesn't slide forward and back. Mm -hmm. Worse than that, it requires <laughs> two bolts to come out. Worse than that, you have to use an Allen key that has the right angle. So the whole point is that thing is useless because you have to bait, nobody's gonna be doing, yeah, thank you. Nobody is gonna be getting a wrench out to take that handle off and it isn't gonna fit in any case with the handle. Right. Besides having to unscrew that handle, mm -hmm. there's still this flex here. If you look, you can see that it moves. What we've done with our helmet, and again, we don't usually talk about what we're doing with the, your camera, but we're here and I'm doing it. <laughs> Is it's your show. We've <laughs> thank you. We've gone and added another point of contact back here. So we have a four screw system for holding the helmet. And like Jen said, the helmet stays with the camera. Once you put that on, you know, when I go to rental houses, I'm like, here, you've got 40 cameras, you need 40 helmets. And that's right. it. They just stay on. Right. And then the beauty is there. I mean, you you, you gotta admit that it's awesome. That blows away having screws and all this kind of crap. Another thing that bugged the crap out of me is that when Jens and I shoot, we're not using audio and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We did in the beta cam days, but nowadays, you know, we go dual system, it's easier, let somebody else deal with the audio, mm -hmm. they gotta monitor it anyway, mm -hmm. so why bring it back to the camera? Mm -hmm. But what pisses us off is that we don't have a, a reference mic or a scratch mic on the camera so that we can at least know that we're pluralizing, you know, when we go to the thing. Did you add that? You're a great straight man. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, we did. Oh, I was yeah. going to grill you if you didn't have that. I mean, besides my few little gripes with the handle, which I'm kind of glad they did because it lets me create a better one. Yeah, that's outside um, the camera in a way. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Uh, my only thing for the future 
is that every one of these cameras to me is too top heavy. They need to slice this thing here and mm -hmm. stick that chunk in the back. Mm -hmm. It's almost better if the cameras are a little longer mm -hmm. and shorter. Nobody seems to understand this top heavy nature. Mm -hmm. When you put it on your shoulder, you get a little of this going mm -hmm. here, you know? And the inertia issue that, that you're always referring to, you know, when you start getting them too long mm -hmm. and you try to do a pan and stop. If it's long mm -hmm. and high, then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then, then you get this kind of weird, you know, these are things that they need to really talk to people who've been around for 30 years mm -hmm. and have had these sorts of issues. Mm -hmm. But uh, besides that, we do like the block thing because mm -hmm. it does allow us to do a lot of stuff. We just want the block shorter and a little mm -hmm. longer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we thank you so much for coming here. We, we, these first look videos are the favorite thing we love doing because we get to learn about the camera. Yeah, yeah. And we're really glad that you came here. That's awesome, Steve. I really, thank really you. enjoyed Thanks it. Thanks for coming, John. Thanks, man. It was great.